Well, my name is Juliet Cecily. Brian. Maureen. Dennis. Lily. And I'm age 73. 76. Turning 82. 59. 71 years of age. Well, I used to say 21 and a bit, but it was the bit I was worried about, but I'm 83. I was roughly about seven years old. Fifteen. Five months. Ten. Twelve. I was two, just under two years, so I've been told. The institution was down on Manly Road, Manly. Pinjarra, Western Australia, and the name of the institution was Kingsley Fairbridge Farm School. In Nazareth House, which is in Wynnum, it is now an aged care home. The first one was Tuffnell Home at Nunda, and the second one was the Blackheath one at Oxley. Carbrook and Mirko, and Woolston Park, and Silky Eggs, and finally Nazareth. I was put there to be looked after. However, things turned out very different to the way I thought they were going to turn out. I was in camp. I mostly worked. I wasn't educated. If people were coming out to inspect or to visit or whatever, out would come the pillows, out would come the toothbrushes, out would come the soap and the toothpaste, all on pretense. And when they left, so did those things. I was called evil. The priests coming in and the nuns coming into us and, and hurting us. And I didn't understand why I would be called evil. If you got too emotional, you were jabbed with a shot and they dropped you to the ground and they put you in a cell. I was a good kid. I wasn't cheeky, I wasn't naughty, I wasn't anything. The psychiatrist has explained to me I had early childhood trauma. I have a domestic service once a fortnight. Home assist. Help me with things too. You know, they clean my house and do my washing and stuff like that, that I can't jump up and down the stairs and do what I used to do anymore, so. I think it's that part of me that didn't want to, you know, you get to a point where you know you're getting older and then suddenly you're <laughs> needing help. Being brought up in an institution it's got an effect on that because a lot of us don't want to go back into an institution. As long as it's not institutionalised, I think we've all had a gut full of that. The aged care package has been a, a great help. Without it, I probably... I've had a, quite a few suicide attempts along the way. This hasn't been an easy road to get this far. I'm surprised I've made it this far. Taking my age on seriously and I'm thinking I'm an elder now, I've got to sort of look after the younger ones. It was I came out of hospital and I desperately needed help. Um, and my aged care people organised it. Um, and then so many people came and so many people talked. It was like, can you please stop? Can you please go away? I'm feeling, you know, I can't cope with all this. A lady came, another lady came in and sat down beside me. I said, would you mind very much going home again and come back another day or give me a ring? Because I can't talk to anybody else. I can't talk to, you know, the people that are here. I can't talk to you as an extra person. They do understand that depression is very real. In, in work in in our clients so I guess that you know there are times when I may have to remind them that you know I need yeah that I'm experiencing severe depression or whatever it's a tricky one for me yeah I didn't realize like I knew I, we, we, I could get the help but I actually thought like to get help like that the people the cleaners would had their own supply of products but this lady turned up one day, um, the first time, and she she 
she didn't have anything, and I just had what I normally use, but it wasn't good good enough for her because a lot of the cans had the inflammable um, flame on it, and she said, oh, we can't use that, and we can't use that, and, and she gave me a list of stuff to go out and, and buy, so the next time that she could come, all, her, all everything she needed was there. I went in at 50 when I had the brain surgery into the nursing home. I escaped with the hearse because pushing it behind with my wheelchair, with my stuff, I wasn't staying in there, they were cruel. But if it's me and I've got to, I'm not bad, I've got to go into a nursing home, you better stop at a vet and get me put down because they're allowed to put down animals and we're, we're only animals. No way, I won't have to go into a nurse now. I would want it to be like open, free, where you'd want to come home. If we don't get, if they don't get told and we get put into an institution where we started from, it's going to have a great effect on our health and our being, mentally and physically. Oh, just some caring even would be good because we didn't get any caring. The kids didn't get any hugging and, you know, loving and stuff. That's all we've ever wanted is love. Everybody needs a hug occasionally. Everybody needs to be totally beautiful. So those are the things that I'd like to see. Really, it's, it's just about being more humane. I think I'd like my, my aged care to be more open and more good with their language about what is happening. It's such a big issue now. There is no way in the world that I will willingly go into an aged care home. It's a problem. It sometimes happens because of COVID. People get sick, um, they've had shortages of staff. And I understand that that's a real issue in society now. So I often get temporary workers. So um, fortunately, I sometimes they let me know and sometimes they don't. I did approach management about letting me know. Um, but then if the, the answer was, well, we've been short of staff and that includes phone, phoning as well. So I've actually been conditioning myself or schooling myself to the fact that one doesn't always get what one wants. They do what take you for with the walks you want to do or take do what they you, you want to do but don't do what they want to do because it doesn't work that's where it will fall down then you'll have to go and get an advocate see to sort out the carer because she's not do, they're not doing the right thing by you and that's the only way it will work if the both of you are, the carer is in sync with what your needs are and what you like to do. I want us to have our own nursing home where our people look after our people because they don't understand us. And as we get older, we're not going to be able to explain. We're going to get worse. We're going to get naughtier. the domestic service, I now have been given uh, an increase because of Parkinson's disease to level two. So I now have a gardener to, to help me with the hard yakka. First up, um, my doctor, <coughs> doctor's uh, secretary, with me back, she had a, a sister that had a motorised scooter and was like brand new. And she offered that to me for nothing and that really made a difference. Right, come here. And I come here every week. As you know, I have no encouragement in myself. I get love and family and brothers and sisters and friends. They're always there to support us and um, make sure that we are not going downhill or astray and we're still in best of health. And lots of lovely people give me support and I think that's, I'm very grateful for that.
because I know that I will get help if I ask for it. Which is, it's, it's, it's all very helpful to me. It makes my life much more manageable and it's all in home and that leaves me as much independence as I am having, yeah.